Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for Connor's baptism. And thank you, Lord, that we are your children and that you are our Heavenly Father. And Lord Jesus, I pray today that you would open up our ears to hear your word, to teach us what you'd have us to know and bring us closer to you. And we ask this all in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Well, I've entitled the message today, Baptized into Christ. And what does that mean? Baptized into Christ. Do you know that the Jews were baptizing people a thousand years before Jesus was born? They called, they called those baptisms mikvahs. Mikvah actually means a, a collection, meaning a collection of water. But it also comes from the root word, that's the very name of our church. Mikvah comes from the root word for hope. And we have New Hope Lutheran Church or New Mikvah Lutheran Church. Isn't that something? A mikvah was um, a ritual washing that the Jews would do for repentance, to show that they're sorry, also to purify them. And they would go through mikvahs sometimes every day because this was the way that they were cleansed of whatever was going on in their life. And in the Jewish mikvah, they would actually go down into the water and the water would cover their whole body. But the Jews also had other types of washings. And that is when the priest would offer up a sacrifice the Bible required the priest to wash his hands and his feet in order that the sacrifice would be acceptable if the priest would not die. And so that was a washing that was not the whole body. When Jesus um, had his Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, the Passover Supper with the disciples, during that service, the disciples would have washed their hands a couple times. And then Jesus did something very interesting. He got down on his, hand, on his knees and washed their feet. And he said to Peter, he said, What I'm doing, you don't understand now, but you will understand it later. In other words, Jesus was getting those disciples ready because they were about to offer him up for the sacrifice of for our sins and their hands were washed and Jesus washed their feet then they went to the garden of Gethsemane and they turned them over to the high priests and Jesus became the sacrifice and the disciples gave him up well as time went on and John the Baptist came on the scene he would take people to the Jordan River and he would immerse them in water. Actually, uh, that word that they used in the Old Testament for the mikvahs was a word that was used that meant to immerse, to bathe, breathe briefly, or to dip. To immerse, bathe briefly, or dip. When John the Baptist came, the people came down to the Jordan River and he immersed them and baptized them. But there's many places in the Jordan River where the water is not deep enough to be immersed. So John either had to find a place where it was deep enough, but lo and behold, about the third century A.D. after Christ, there are pictures of people kneeling down in the river, and having a person pour then water 
on their head. It's like we did today with Connor. We poured water on his head and the water would run down them. In the catacombs there are pictures of people being baptized where they just poured water over their head. And this is pretty early too. Later on in the church, as time went on, the Christian church got away from immersion and went to just sprinkling the water on the head. Today we sprinkled water on Connor's head. But it is not the water that does it. It's the Spirit of God. And the water is symbolic of a washing that God is doing in the heart and in the soul. It's a spiritual washing. When a person is an adult and they get baptized, they say, Lord, I want to serve you. And the Bible commands us to be baptized. And when they want to serve the Lord, when they want to repent, when they want forgiveness, then they go through the ritual of baptism. Some by immersion, some by sprinkling. It's not the water that does it, but the water is symbolic of what is taking place in the life of the person. Today in Connor's life, Connor didn't have the mental ability to say, I want to be baptized. But his parents, who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, were saying, Jesus, we give our child to you. He's yours. And they baptized him. Babies and infants were also baptized in the catacomb. And even in the New Testament, where it doesn't specifically say there's children being baptized, it does say that families were baptized and whole houses were baptized together. The whole household was baptized at once. So what does baptism into Christ mean? When a person is baptized... They're saying, Jesus, I want you as my Lord and Savior. Martin Luther called it a sacrament. The definition of a sacrament is that it's a holy act instituted by God in which by visible means he gives and seals his invisible grace. A holy act instituted by God Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Baptism is a sacrament. Holy communion is a sacrament. Jesus said at the Last Supper, as this is my body and blood, and as often as you do this, remember me. A holy act instituted by Christ in which by visible means, water in baptism, the bread and wine in Holy Communion, he gives and seals his invisible grace. The water, <coughs> excuse me, the water is a, is a symbol of what Christ has done in Connor's life. The Holy Communion that we partake is what Jesus did for our forgiveness. But it doesn't guarantee us anything. If we look at baptism as a magic act that gets us into heaven, it won't do it. If we look at communion, taking communion as something that automatically gets us into heaven, it will not do it. In the New Testament it says, if you take communion unworthily, in other words, not knowing that Jesus is giving us his body and blood on the cross, that we eat and drink condemnation unto ourselves. If we go through baptism saying, this is it, I've paid my dues, and failed to grow up knowing Jesus, it didn't do any good. This is an outward sign 
of God's inward grace. This is an outward sign of God's inward grace, but the inward grace only comes if we receive it and want it. Baptized into Christ means that we want Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and this is the symbol of it. It's what God wants for all of us. He wants us all to be filled with his Holy Spirit, to live for him, to know him, to walk with him. And if you're out there today and have not ever been baptized and would like to be baptized and a blessing will come through it, see me afterwards and we can baptize you in church by sprinkling or take you down to the lake by immersion, however you would like to have it done. Because it is, a, is it, it is an expression of saying, Jesus, I want you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I give my life to you. And the Bible commands us to believe and be baptized. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Jesus, I pray that if there be anyone here today who's not yet been baptized, Lord, that you would so put it on their heart, Jesus, to want it. But Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would put it on each and every one of our hearts to want to get closer to you. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Strengthen our faith and help us, Jesus, to live for you every single day, all day long. And I ask this in your wonderful, precious name. Amen.